Welcome everyone, my name is Kristen Ziders, and for today we will be reviewing the analysis of Walt Disney's adolescence through Bronfen Brenner's bioecological theory of human development. If you can dream it, you can do it. And all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Our famous quotes by Walt Ellis Disney. He is a well-known cartoonist, animator, producer, writer, and founder of the Walt Disney Company. He was the fourth and youngest son out of Elias and Flora Disney's five children. He was born on December 5th in 1901 in Chicago, Illinois. Despite their family moving many times throughout his childhood and growing up in poverty and experiencing child abuse, Walt Disney became a name synonymous with family entertainment through movies, TV, and the Disney theme parks. Walt Disney was a talented cartoonist who worked nearly his whole life to pursue his dreams, and he developed such an appreciation for his hobbies that he spent most of his spare time doing them. Um, he has since yet passed, but despite his adversities, Disney's life stands as an American success story of good overcoming evil when one is really motivated to. And here we just have a few descriptive words of Walt Disney and his one of his famous quotes. Many of the classic childhood favorite movies created by Walt Disney have overstretching themes around the sanctity of family and the consequences when family is broken. Many of the characters, such as Bambi, Dumbo, Pinocchio, have personality defects related to having lost or missing parents. It only seems fitting that the darkness of one's childhood comes forth in their creative releases. And so by examining the processes, people, context, and time that influenced Walt Disney's development, one can see how the negative influences of poverty, abuse, can be counteracted by one's personal characteristics related to resiliency, as well as peer and teacher social supports, and then be turned into motivating factors of success and releasing his creativity. Each individual's personal development is unique to himself. Yet analysis of an individual's resiliency and experiences can serve as hope for others experiencing similar disheartening situations. Therefore, by looking through the lens of Bronfen Brenner's bioecological theory at Walt Disney's adolescence, information can be gained regarding the impact of poverty and abuse, as well as the resiliency related to one's mindset and attitude. Bronfen Brenner's bioecological theory on human development is comprised of four systems, and the interrelatedness um, of these systems. One core element of Bronfen Brenner's theory is the process, person, context, time model, also known as PPCT. And with each of these four processes, or systems, process, person, context, time, are comprised of sub-processes, characteristics, and dimensions, which we will now look at. So here we have process, person, context, time. First is Bronfen Brenner's bioecological theory of human development describes that processes of how an individual interacts with their environment over time through repeated experiences taking place at points of their life or during specific horse, her, historical periods in which they live. It's through these processes that individuals discover their place and make sense of the world in which they live. Walt Disney's reoccurring adolescent processes were his child-child interactions with his older brother Roy and his best friend Walter Pfeiffer. And in his alone time, developing his sketching and drawing skills. He learned about support and guidance and love from his brother Roy. When Walt was only eight years old, um, 
his two oldest brothers had left home and leaving that the two younger brothers, Roy and Walt, to help oversee their father's farm and to earn their keep. Their father, Elias, would use frequent corporal punishment to encourage their productivity, which often left young Walt very weak, dazed in pain, and crying through the nights. His brother, Roy, who had been eight years older than him, um, saw himself as his protector, and Walt even mentioned him as being his surrogate father. Um, in a c excerpt described by Mark Elliott, it says, Roy, older and physically stronger, was able to endure the punishments better than his little brother. He would then rub Walt's hurts and rock him to sleep with promises that everything would be all right in the morning. And then later on in life, when Roy was 18 and leaving for home, he taught his 10-year-old brother Walt how to defend himself from their father. And it was through these interactions between Walt and Roy that Walt really learned people can support and confide in one another despite the examples that had been set by their father. And these experiences carried it into Walt's later life as he believed he was capable of beating any adversities that he faced. Furthermore, through other child and child activities with his best friend Walter Pfeiffer and the Pfeiffer family, Walt Disney embraced his lighthearted, fun, charming, and enthusiasm for nearly everything. It was with Walter Pfeiffer and his family where Walt Disney was able to find his quote-unquote laughing place. Um, Walt Pfeiffer and Walt Disney connected over their love for performing. In one of my uh, research, it described how the Pfeiffers would provide Walt with a place to embrace and develop his already found love. And it was through this passage here. When, quote, two bad Walters, as Pfeiffer and Disney called themselves, were performing routines at school with Mr. Pfeiffer instructing and rehearsing them. And it was from this that they began entering talent contests at the local Angus Theater. Really, the whole Pfeiffer family had been made up of performers. And it's a place where Disney finally felt he could truly be himself and be a kid that he wanted to be. It's where he found acceptance and he was truly able to begin refining his talents and enthusiasm for his future. And then lastly, in the process context, was Disney's developing artistic skills. He enjoyed sketching, acting, and almost anything, performing involving art. But I ever first state that Walt enjoyed art and claimed to have become interested in drawing at almost as soon as he could hold a pencil. Early in his life, he would draw and sketch for people and even once got a nickel for one of his drawings. He later then would sketch, draw, paint, perform, act, and do impressions in and out of school with his best friend. And even as he grew up and had less and less spare time, he would use any part of that to draw. It was actually in school where his artistic abilities finally became recognized and embraced. And later, he was in his adolescence, he drew cartoons for the school paper and magazine. One school manager for the McKinney Voice stated that Walter Dis Disney displayed unusual artistic talent that made him the magazine's cartoonist. Now, in addition to processes, Brenner also accredited that there are person characteristics and aspects that individuals take with them into their interactions. These three person characteristics outlined in Bronfenbrenner's theory are known as demand, resource, and force characteristics. The demand characteristics are easily visible to other people and also the source, often the source of expectations that become formed before even getting to know someone. These features include age, gender, skin color, and physical appearance characteristics. Resource characteristics, on the other hand, 
are opposite from demand characteristics in that they are not readily apparent to other people, yet still impact the interactions that they have. For example, some re resource characteristics are related to mental, emotional, social, and material resources, such as skills, intelligence, past experiences, as well as access to food, housing, caring parents, and educational opportunities. And lastly, force characteristics are the differences found in an individual's temperate, temperament, motivation, and persistence. The person characteristics, person demand characteristics, most recognizable in Walt were his male gender, Caucasian ethnicity, and his slim, attractive, six feet tall build. During his time being a male, meant that he could go to school and was even encouraged to take on leadership roles, which later helps he and his brother Roy develop and create the Walt Disney Company. Furthermore, the fact that Walt Disney was physically attractive at six feet tall, people found him very charming and were willing to open up to him. And being seen as attractive and charming in the entrepreneurial fields, of performing, producing, and directing is key to having someone look and even consider his work. Now in addition to these demand characteristics, he had some less apparent resource characteristics that impact, impacted his relations. For Walt Disney, his most noteworthy resource characteristic was his artistic skill that was further supported by his educational opportunities. In school, he had managed average grades, but he had shown a strong aptitude for reading and artistic capabilities. It was in school where he got to perform and draw, but his love for sketching started much earlier in life. In 1906, when his family first lived on a farm in Missouri, Walt Disney loved to sketch pictures of the farm animals. He even considered them, at the time, to be his only friends. Then in 1910, when his family moved to Kansas City, outside of the farm life, he attended Benton Grammar School, where he first met Walt Pfeiffer, and got to become involved in the fun and entertainment um, of school and outside. One biographer noted that in Walt Disney's adolescence, Disney's strikingly original schedules were always what the weren't always what the teachers expected. One time, he drew a series of flowers with human hands and faces. These sketches puzzled his instructors, who had asked the class to draw real flowers that had been set up as models. Now these drawings were only a small hint of what Disney could do. It was later remarked that his Benton classmates remembered him drawing constantly, and eat, which this even became his primary source of his identity in school. And again, where he first got recognized for his art capabilities. Now without this artistic ability, his other educational opportunities would not have opened up quite the same way that they did. In 1915, Walt enrolled in taking evening cl art classes at the Kansas City Art Institute, where he began to work closely with other artists. Also during his adolescence, the interactions of his resource characteristics of artistic ability and his access to education um, with, in combination, the processes of close relationships with the Pfeifers greatly impacted his development of becoming a pioneer in animation, TV production, and being a showman. Although these characteristics were certainly important in his development, it may have been different if Walt Disney did not have a strong motivation and persistence to stay involved with his passions, which came from his force characteristics of having an enthusiastic and optimistic temperament, along with the persistence and resiliency in the face of adversity. Uh, one remark that Walt was motivated to do what he wanted and seemed to be enthused about everything. His father once commented, Quote, whatever he wanted to do, he did without e ever thinking about the harm. He would always go ahead with any of his ideas, whether he had the means or not. At another time, 
in his childhood, Walt and his younger sister Ruth found a barrel lined with tar that Walt saw as a great opportunity to paint with. Walt and his sister painted with the tar on the side of their parents' whitewashed home, even after Ruth had asked him if it would wash off or not. Walt, of course, had assured her that it would be okay. And furthermore, Walt was always working throughout his life, which greatly emphasized his motivation to follow his passions and make it out of poverty. Walt had to work for his father at an early age of eight or nine on the farm, and when the family moved, he still worked for his dad, but now in the early mornings and late evenings doing newspaper deliveries. Although Walt worked for his stern father, Elias, his father, often kept most of the earnings, which led to Walt having to pick up additional jobs in his already full schedule. One biographer elaborated on all the jobs Walt did by stating, quote, Walt had earned by selling his own papers on the trolley and invested it so that in addition to delivering for the pharmacy, the boy began working at a candy store during school recess to earn money to buy more papers that he could sell without Elias knowing. At this point in his adolescence, he ran newspaper deliveries, sold newspapers on the street, sold candy at recess, ran local deliveries for the pharmacy, and was attending school and still somehow found time for his sketching. These extra jobs helped Walt to pay for his art supplies and continued to fuel his passion. Further yet, in understanding Walt Disney development through Bonfrenbrenner's bioecological theory, the contexts and environments in which Disney's processes and person characteristics took place in had lasting impacts. The context or environment that interactions take place within are made up of four interrelated systems. These four systems that make up context are known as the microsystem, mesosystem, and exosystem and macrosystem. The microsystem is any environment that the individual spends time in, such as home, school, and peer groups. The mesosystem is the interrelations among microsystems. The exosystem are the contexts that the individual is not directly a part of, but that still hold influence on their development. And lastly, the macrosystem encompasses groups with members of shared values, beliefs, resources, and lifestyle patterns, such as seen in cultures, subcultures, and extended social structures. For the purposes of understanding Walt Disney's development, we will be looking at the microsystem, mesosystem, and exosystem context. The two most notable microsystems that impacted Walt Disney are his home and school life. In his home life, Walt had an abusive father, and their family was poor and often had to move for job prospects. Walt had experienced many beatings from his father, and his brother reported, stating such, That was just dad. He'd give us impulsive wax. Later, Walt would say, quote, Elias's temper was violent. You could not argue with him without braving his wrath. And other reporters state that the frugality, discipline, tacturity, and reproachfulness that had always been constitutes of Elias Disney's personality, furthermore, in which that he prided himself on with his stern morality to put the fear of God into his children and never let anyone doubt that he was the head of the family. Growing up with an authoritarian and abusive father in a poor family was only one of the microsystems in, that Walt interacted in. He also had his school life. At first, he had to wait to attend school because at age, until the age of seven because no one could take him. It was not until when he attended Benton Grammar School that his talents for art became recognized. Later, he then attended Chicago, the Chicago Art Institute for evening classes, and then after graduating from Benton Grammar School in 1917, he enrolled at McKinley High School in Chicago. At McKinley High School, he took photography classes and was a cartoonist for the school paper. And this here is actually an example of his cartoon. 
It was truly his school that helped him escape from his home life and build his passions for art and entertaining. Which we can see through the mezzo system, which is the interrelations of his home and school life. And this is exemplified how once his not once, many times, how his father would keep him home from school to do more work. And then again, um, when the school had to send a letter home with Walt about what he had drawn for his homework assignment. First, though, his father's newspaper route had been demanding, and if Elias was too ill to make the deliveries, he would keep Walt home from school to do them. On most days, Walt had to wake up very early to start the process of picking up, rolling the papers, and delivering them in the freezing and sweltering weathers, to return home only for a quick nap before attending school. He'd also have to leave school early, at least by half an hour, to make sure that he could pick up the papers and start the evening deliveries. This was a twice-a-day, seven-day-a-week job that started from the young age of nine, and left Walt with very little amounts of sleep and very little time to focus on schoolwork. Another point in which his school life interacted with his home life was when Walt turned in a homework assignment of a sketch of several left-wing political cartoons that he had seen in the socialist magazine of his father's. With this, his teacher sent Walt directly to the principal for his drawings, and they sent an angry letter home to his parents. The letter from the school principal criticizes Walt's father for having socialist magazines in the home. And it's seen from these contexts within the mezzo system that Walt's home life was quite different from his schooling. Next, the exosystem, exosystem is where environments that are separate from the individual impact that person's development. It was with Walt's father's rapid job changes and unstable income that greatly impacted Walt's family. At first, his father had worked in real estate, then construction, then moved the family to be a farmer in Missouri, again moved the family to Kansas City, this is where they began the newspaper delivery, and then finally he moved again to have part ownership in the jelly factory. This was all during Walt's adolescent years, well, childhood and adolescent years. It was Walt's father's occupation of being a farmer that first kept Walt out of school. And then the newspaper delivery, in which Walt and his brother had to do all the work. It wasn't until 1917 when his father decided to move to Chicago that they had to leave Walt behind to finish his schooling. It was truly Elias' unstable work that left the family poor and influenced how he interacted with his children in an abusive manner. Later in life, Walt has remarked that he was both saddened by his family leaving him in 1907, but also felt a newfound freedom for what he could do and be. Last of all is time in Brown from Brenner's bioecological theory and the PPCT model. Time is the element in which the individual's life takes place through three subsystems known as the microtime, mesotime, and macrotime. Microtime is about time as it is occurring during specific situations. Mesotime is about the interactions that occur consistently in one's environment over time. And lastly, macrotime is also known as the chrono system is the historical time period of events and developmental processes that take place at a particular developmental stage. In Walt's life, macro time is of the most importance. He grew up in a time with Theodore Roosevelt as president and a time of social reform. In Walt's later adolescent years, in the year of 1917 as well, the United States became involved in World War I and his closest bro brother, Roy, enlisted. It was by 1918 Walt Disney decided to drop out of school, forge his birth date on his birth certificate to appear older to enlist in World War I just as his brother did. And then later in his life, in the 1930s, the Great Depression caused many hardships for people. 
especially for those in the entrepreneurial business, such as he was. Um, this suggests that for Walt Disney, growing up in poverty, yet during a time where optimism and appeal um, was large, had actually prepared him for handling the hardships during the Great Depression. It was also greatly suggested in the readings that Walt Disney's creation of Mickey Mouse and the marketing of Mickey Mouse merchandise had helped him and many others stay in business during the Great Depression. And so we have a picture here of Walt in all his uh, Mickey Mouse merchandise. So in conclusion, in examining Walt Disney's adolescent development through Braun Fermenter's bioecological theory with the process, person, context, time model, it reveals implications that one's personal characteristics interacting in the processes and contexts over time can impact their success in persistence in overcoming and beating adversities such as child abuse and poverty. Importantly are the school systems that can provide children um, that come from impoverished and abusive homes with the support, strength, and motivation to pursue their own dreams as well as um, the ability to learn about the negative implications of growing up in poverty that affect an individual's growth and their tradition and transition into adulthood. Wang and Eccles, in 2012, study conduct, was conducted in order to examine the influences of social support from teachers, peers, and parents on adolescents' trajectories in school engagement. So, it, over, it looked at the overarching impact of social support on adolescent development. It was a longitudinal study that followed 1,479 students from 7th grade to 11th grade. And they measured the impact of different systems of social support on five domains of school engagement. These different systems of social support were teacher, peer, and parental support. They found that the impact of teacher support, teacher social support, was the greatest for emotional and cognitive engagements of students. This finding fits to support that Walt Disney's schooling was important and that teacher and peer social support from that context may have acted as protective factors for Walt to pursue his dreams when in his home life he did not he was not provided that support. And next, it is important to consider the impact of growing up in poverty for Walt Disney's development. Kendig, Mattingly, and Bianchi in 2014 investigated the ways by which social economic inequality in childhood can differentiate youth experiences of adolescence and into young adulthood. They examined whether or not those who grew up in poverty have more family responsibilities than their more affluent peers, as well as if they take on adult roles too early in their life. Their sample consisted of 714 youth from ages 13, beginning at age 13 and following them until the age of 17. They found that those who grew up in poverty experienced many early tr transitions um, with little to no support for their transition into adulthood, that they spend more than half of their childhood and adolescent years helping and supporting their parents, and that they become financially responsible for themselves before even reaching adulthood. This can be seen in Walt Disney's development in that he grew up in poverty from a young age. He had helped his father and family financially nearly every day from the age of nine and became financially responsible for himself early on by working all of those multiple side jobs. So in sum, it was primarily Walt Disney's personal force characteristics in conjunction with his supportive school and peer relationships that truly helped him develop into the well-known man in the world of family entertainment. Run from Brenner's bioecological theory and the use of the process, person, context, time model provide a framework in which the development of one can be seen through their individuality and the interrelated connections that they make with others in their environment across time. While not every child or adolescent who grows up in poverty 
or with an abusive parent will become as successful in following their creative dreams. It is through examining Walt Disney's personal development that provides hope that the interrelated systems of one life can provide one with the courage and passion to make the life in which they dream. Thank you everyone for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation and the analysis of Walt Disney through Bronfenbrenner's bioecological theory.